Have you ever found yourself sat there listening to all the sounds of a plane at a loss to what they all actually mean? Especially just after takeoff, where you start to sit back and relax, or for the more nervous flyer, the relief that the aircraft is pulling away from the ground. And all of a sudden you get hit with a barrage of loads of different sounds. In this video, I'll explain what all these sounds mean and why they are happening. Before we start, I just want to thank Jack, Katie and others who have commented asking for this video to be made. If you have any suggestions or questions, just drop it in the comments below and I'll try and get back to you or make a video in the future. Just a quick bit about my background before we start. Uh, I'm not a commercial airline pilot, but I am a pilot in the Royal Air Force, the RAF. I've specialised in multi-engine aircraft, so I should be well placed to answer some of these questions below. But if there are any commercial pilots that see this video and want to add anything below, please comment down below. I'd love to see that conversation getting started. So let's start with the first sound then. So imagine you've just taken off, you've heard the engine spool up and pull you down the runway and you've just taken off. Now shortly after you've left the ground, you'll start to hear a grinding noise and some vibration across the aircraft. And this will vary depending on where you're sat. If you're sat closer to the wings or to the front of the aircraft, you'll feel a little bit more of the vibration. Now this is because the landing gear is being retracted. So the first thing that a pilot will do after takeoff is to get that landing gear up. So what you're hearing is the landing gear doors open with the landing gear being withdrawn into the aircraft and then the doors closing and locking behind them. So the reason why you feel this more when you're sat over the wing is because that's where the rear landing gear is located, just at the back end of the wing and with the nose gear obviously at the front of the aircraft so you'd hear it a bit more there as well. For the next sound you'll then hear a series of dings as the aircraft climbs through the air. So the first one will be that the landing gear is up and then you'll hear a second chime later on. Now this is to notify the cabin crew that they're free to unstrap and begin their duties. And this will be the exact same sound that you'll hear for the third one where it will be accompanied with the seatbelt sign and it means that you're free to unstrap and move about the cabin. Now the next sound is probably the most concerning of all and that's when you're in the climb and then all of a sudden you hear the engines start to spool down and sounds like they're starting to stop working. So this happens because when the pilots start their takeoff roll, they set a takeoff thrust setting. So what that means is, for takeoff, the pilots will set a thrust setting. Sometimes the takeoff go around, which is a set thrust setting, to give you the amount of thrust you need to take off. And for others, it'll be something called flex. But the premise is the same. The pilots will set a takeoff thrust setting, which will require more thrust from the engines than if you're in the climb or if you're in the cruise. So what's happening when you hear the engines sound like they stopped working when you're in that climb is the pilots are moving the thrust levers from that takeoff thrust setting and moving it to a climb thrust setting. So all that's happening is there's less demand on the engines for thrust. So you hear that sound of that reduced thrust demand and then it will pick up to then match the thrust required to continue that climb. But whilst we're on the topic of engine sounds, if we fast forward towards the approach and landing stage of the flight, you might also notice that when the aircraft's coming in to land, you'll hear a similar sound of the engines sort of sound like they're picking up and slowing down and picking up. And this is happening simply because the aircraft and the pilots are trying to get to or hold an appropriate approach and then eventually land in speed. And there's several factors that could come into play to make that more profound, but mostly it would be to do with wind gusts and things like that where it changes the airspeed around the aircraft. So the pilots just need to keep up with it to uh, maintain that speed. And then after the aircraft's come into land, sometimes you'll then hear the engines pick up again and sounds like they get put on quite a large amount of thrust. Now, sometimes that can happen because the pilot has decided to go around and then you'll just take off again. But most of the time it will be because the engine reversers have been used. And basically what that means is the thrust that the engines are producing get redirected to come out the front and sides of the engines to slow the aircraft down to aid with braking. 
So I've just added a couple of other bonus sounds into the end of this video because it was quite short. So just after you've boarded the aircraft and the doors have been closed, sometimes you hear a really loud whining sound coming from underneath the aircraft. And what this sound is, is the electric pump that pressurizes the hydraulics. So usually they'll be closing the cargo door, which requires a lot of that hydraulic pressure, and they need an electric pump to keep the system pressurized, and that's what that sound is. Another strange sound that you also hear is a barking sound coming from the aircraft. And again, this is usually on startup of the engines and whilst taxiing. And you should only find this sound on Airbus aircraft, so on the A320s and A330s. And again, it's to do with the hydraulics, but it's called the power transfer unit, and its job is to maintain hydraulic pressure in the system. So each engine will pressurize its own system, but sometimes the aircraft will taxi on just one engine, and this can be done just to save fuel, but it means that one side will require assistance with pressurization of hydraulics. And sometimes this can happen if both engines are running. It's just basically if the system runs below a certain PSI, then this system will activate to then top it back up. So at least you know now it's actually the power transfer unit and not a dog that someone smuggled on into the aircraft. So just a short one for you today. Thank you for all the comments and suggestions so far. Please keep them coming in and I'll see if I can get some videos made up and answer those questions for you. But as always, I hope you're having a great day. Thank you for watching this far and I'll see you guys in the next one.